for today's cup of coffee. It's never boring. It's like I have, I am a Leo, but I have a high amount of Virgo in my chart. Yeah, and I have a high amount of Aries, motherfuckers. <sighs> yes. <laughs> yes, he does. Pray for me. Pray for me. Oh, and I will tell you somebody else. I meant to mention this in the previous video. There's someone that's amongst the bitch shoot audience. That the bitch shoot. Bitch shoot audience. Bitch shoot. I will. That the needs prayer. Shoot. For whatever reason, there's someone that does not like Vikings and they don't like pirate ships. Or they don't like us talking about it. Because That could be too. But anyhow, both times... It's like, within seconds, this wasn't even somebody who could have had enough time to watch the video, because I had not yet watched the video, and had down dooted it. And I'm thinking, what the fuck? that to me is a cry for help. <laughs> so please pray for whoever that is, that is, you know... <laughs> Of course, bit shoot, honestly. And there's some wonderful people on bit shoot. I like bit shoot quite a bit. And I don't go on it. It's it's really sad because a lot of people do not comment because some of the most vocal ones over there have some really horrible things that they I, I think that they think that's their job, that they go on certain people's channels, not mine. I'm I'm glad of that because, you know, that would be an automatic mute on somebody. Um, and that they post horrible things. Yes. If somebody else makes a good comment, they will have horrible things posted under their comment. And I'm like, why? Who are these people? What part of the world are they from? It's not just a bit shoot. It's not. I mean, and it's not. I'm sure it's not the majority of people on bit shoot. It's not just bit shoot. But it's like, why? Odyssey doesn't do that. Our little community on YouTube and, you know, which has been together for years now. Yeah. Probably longer than I even realize. Yeah. We don't do that. No. So I, I prefer fine. quality over quantity. But please pray for whoever this is. They have issues. Well, it's just... You know, and maybe they just don't like the Vikings. And that's all right. Give the video a damn chance, you dumb fuck. <laughs> that's what I thought. It's like if it had been, who could not like stories about, you know, sailor tattoos and the meanings behind them? I don't know. Uh, but, yeah. And we do actually pray for, for our viewers. We really do. That comes whatever their needs are. God knows their needs. We don't have to know their needs. Mm. We're going to be talking about needs today because when this one is uploaded, it will be 4th of July. I need a shrub. <clears throat> Absolutely. <laughs> Tis but a flesh wound. <laughs> and our country is in distress, if you all have not been paying attention. Yes. We have had our American flag high, you know, flying upside down for probably about a year at this point. Mm. And that is a distress signal. So please pray for our nation. And had watched Independence Day. That is such a kick-ass movie. If you have not watched it in a while, if you've never watched it, um, it's... It's good. It is a good movie. And I can't remember if it came out in the 80s. I think it did. The original one. Yeah. I mean, back, well, of course, the original one that had Will Smith in it. and No, the one that had Will Smith in it did not come out in the 80s. Are you sure? Hang on. I can find out. Through the power of Google search. Uh, you asked this. You need to talk amongst yourselves while I I'm this. just like I'm telling you okay let's find out use Google for that search leave me alone leave me alone I'll he look. is micromanaging I'll what look. search engine I use alright 
Unless it was like the 90s. Well, and it may have been the 90s because, shit, who can remember? It was back during a time when things were not as screwed up. That was, yeah, it was Independence Day. And I think it said it came out in 96. I didn't realize it was that recent. Anyhow, it is an absolutely wonderful movie. And it's a great subject. And people are like, she's in a strain. Yes, I am in a strain. <laughs> I'm trying to, because my, I am short. I am a short people. It came out in 1996. It lasts about two hours and 25 minutes. It's worth the watch. It really is. The only thing I have with a lot of these movies, it's like the, you know, the dialogue will be at a low level, so you have to turn the volume up and, and then, then the music will be like the yeah the action stuff will just like blow you out of the room <laughs> so, I, I don't know maybe that's supposed to be the fun of it yes I, I, anyhow yes what this was about of course aliens invading and there's been lots and lots of stories lately about governments having hearings about ufos sightings uh, supposedly have increased of seeing these things so mm -hmm. it makes you wonder yes and found an article that was written on April 30th of 2020 by Sean Martin from Express and it's uh, the the link is Express uh, UK and the link will be in the description box and it's entitled, Alien Shock. President Reagan attempted to warn the world about alien species claim. See, that, that, that title could have been a little redone there, Sean. And so, Sean writes, Ronald Reagan, who served as the 40th president of the United States from 1981 to 1989. Maybe that's why I thought it was in the 80s. Attempted to warn the public about the existence of aliens according to a new claim mm. during the decades-long cold war between russia and the united states president reagan attempted to claim or calm the tension between the two powerhouses by stating there is not much different bet difference between them in doing so the president asked the united nations to imagine how quickly humanity would come together if it was confronted by an extraterrestrial civilization in one speech to the UN, President Reagan said, quote, if, uh, what if all of us in the world were threatened by an outer power from outer space from another planet? We would all of a sudden find out that we didn't have any differences at all, end quote. Wow. Yeah. In another quote, Reagan said, quote, perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bond. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world, end quote. It makes you ponder, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and while most people saw this as an attempt to diffuse simmering tensions between the U.S. and the then Soviet Union, one person believes President Reagan was trying to subtly warn the public of aliens. Prominent conspiracy theorist Scott C. Warren wrote on his blog, ET Database, I'll have to check that blog out. Mm. Quote, he really <clears throat> tried hard to inform the public, even when he knew it was against national security to do so. On September the 16th, 1983, U.S. President Ronald Reagan gave a memorable speech in front of the United Nations. In it, he subtly suggests that aliens exist and that all of humanity could be lost if they decide to attack. Of course, President Reagan had inside information from the CIA and NASA and was told that aliens do exist. Aliens. But he, <clears throat> yeah. But he couldn't just come out and say so without breaking national security rules. So instead, he subtly hinted to the rest of the world leaders about what he had learned from the CIA and NASA. He also knows that a small percentage of the other presidents in the United States meeting also knew about the existence of aliens. Now, pondering about world peace is nice, but I feel that President Reagan felt a weight on his shoulders, a burden of carrying this knowledge of the existence of aliens. 
remember it was late 1980s and back then the technology was very inferior to today's tech marvels it must have been very frightening for him to know that aliens existed but to have so few people he could sit down and talk about this subject openly end quote mm. and it was one of the things in the movie that the president did not know and they said the reason he had not been informed about the aliens was for what was it plausible deniability yeah and that that was secretary of defense that was actually the bad guy and that they had known about this stuff since roswell Do I think that the They're pre- even hiding shit from the president? Of the course. Fuck? Oh, of course they that do. That in and of itself should be illegal. Right. Well, that's where they talk about the deep state and the shadow government and all that stuff. Those were the very people that Eisenhower warned people about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is going... It's not like it's new. It's always been despicable. It's just been cranked up to 11 recently. To the max. Yeah. Then from Smithsonian Magazine, and I sort of had to weed through this because now this is the Smithsonian, and and a lot of these things. Smithsonian. They'll have a snippet of truth, and then they put a spin on things because <laughs> that be how they do. A snippet. A sniff. This is why main. A whiff. This is why mainstream media does not like independent journalists or independent content creators. No. That's because why they're like, trying to make the internet, like, literally TV again. Right, because they're trying to control the narrative. Yeah. Anyhow, from the Smithsonian Magazine, this was by Danny Lewis, November the 25th of 2015. And the article is entitled, Reagan and Gorbachev Agree to Pause the Cold World in ca- Cold War cold war in case of an alien invasion and mr lewis writes at one point during the 1985 geneva summit president ronald reagan and soviet premier mikhail gorbachev took a break from negotiations to take a walk only their private interpreters were present and for years the details of what they talked about were kept secret from both the russian and american public But during a 2009 interview with Charlie Rose and Reagan's Secretary of State George Shultz, Gorbachev revealed that Reagan asked him point blank if they could set aside their differences in case the world was invaded by aliens. As Jimmy Orr reported to the Christian Science Monitor at the time, quote, Schultz was talking about the Lake Geneva summit and mentioned the two leaders ducked out for a meeting to take a walk to a nearby cabin. And, quote, I wasn't, like what I, do. I wasn't there, Schultz said, before Gorbachev cut him off. From the fireside house, President Reagan suddenly said to me, what would you do if the United States were suddenly attacked by someone from outer space? Would you help us? I said, no doubt about it. He said, we too. So that's interesting. Gorbachev, Gorbachev said uh, too much laughter. Hmm. So, in other words, they agreed if aliens were invaded, that they would set aside their differences. Yeah. And as far as we know, aliens never tried to take over the planet during the 1980s. No. <clears throat> so, Reagan and Gorbachev's informal agreement was, wasn't was put to the test. But perhaps unsurprisingly for a president whose nuclear deterrent plan was nicknamed Star Wars, Reagan was a big science fiction fan. Now, within the rest of this article, they're trying to attribute all this to Reagan's love of science fiction. They're trying to make it like as if he wanted it to be um, a judge. Uh, yeah, a science fiction, whatever the fuck. And so and it's like, no, he knew he, pro- he right. more than likely knew that this shit was real. Yeah. And so the article continues at this one point. It says, It's hard to say how serious Reagan was when he asked Gorbachev if the Soviets would help fight off an alien invasion, but he was far from the first government official to mull over this out-of-the-world fighting tactic. During the 1950s and 60s, a group of U.S. Army engineers was tasked with thinking up theoretical weapons that could be used to defend non-existent lunar bases. Or so they tell us non-existent. 
And recently, Antonelli Zak reports from the Popular Mechanics, the Russian government revealed that in the 1970s, uh, the Soviet Almaz, I think that's how you say it, Almaz Space Station was not only armed with a top secret space cannon, but it was it also test fired it. Oh, damn. What so, they shoot it at? Right. Right. How do we know that they didn't accidentally hit some sort of thing? Well, you know, and that was something that... It sent um, a giant fucking meteorite into orbit. Well, past couple of days, there has been news about that something had crashed on the moon and had created a double crater. It was... It they were thinking it was some kind of rocket. Well, no, it, this has been recent because these people that, you know, they watch the moon all the time. So who knows? And as far as do we really think that aliens are going to look like the Hollywood version? Do we think that they're going to be these tentacled whatever it is? What if they are amongst us and they look like us? It's a firm possibility. That is what. There's literally people saying that already. Well, we've been saying that for a long time. And these are the ones that people refer to as the lizard people, the reptilians and stuff. Not only them. Uh, Not well, only I, them. I have no doubt that there's other ones, but those are the primary ones as far as that we know are trying to uh, either enslave or kill humanity. Aliens. And, you know, we are, I'm sure, considered tenfold hat wearers. That doesn't mean we're wrong. There's a lot of people I'm as far as the that. reptilians. I can, I can pick up 4K television with those hats. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm one of these. Do I believe that those things have been here for centuries and have lied to you and deceived and misdirected humanity? Yeah, because scripture tells us that. If you go back to the book of Enoch, which should have been canonized, it very much tells us these things. Mm-hmm. Interdimensional beings rather than other planets, shapeshifters. How many cultures talk about shapeshifters? I think every single one. Yeah. Yeah. In various and sundry forms. So. I mean, literally, like, cult, <clears throat> like, think the skinwalkers, the windigos. Mm hmm. So. You know, so very much. Ooga booga booga. I don't think there's anybody that's paying any bit of attention that doesn't understand that we have been infiltrated. It's not just our country. It's all the other countries. That was the reason I was so angry at Brent Swanser the other day when he, that hit piece. Because that was just stupid. Is he living under a rock? Maybe. As far as him questioning, are, is there a handful, a group of people that are trying to run the entire world? That's been proven. Maybe he, maybe he got threatened. Or maybe, That's so, what, maybe someone literally like took his style of writing and wrote in. No, wrote no, because him. no, the, the Nick Redford and stuff, they're bound to read what the other ones are. You know, it's basically Mr. Redford's uh, website. So he's bound to have okayed it or something. Maybe he didn't read it thoroughly. But like I said, we roles. don't know that we have not had an alien invasion invasion and outer space, interdimensional, whatever it is that are not non-human entities. I Should mean, we say that? We're going to have something happen when CERN opens that portal at full blast this time. Yeah. On July 5th. It's not only July 5th. They're starting at July 4th and then the 5th. And then into the 5th. Well, this this video will be released on uh, 4th of July. Mm-hmm. And some of us understand what has been sacrificed to give us freedom. We are going to and be to shot fight. in some sort of back ass. And to fight, continue to fight for freedom freedom of speech, even for the people on BitChute if they want to say stupid, hateful shit. 
that is their right to do that. Mm. Just as I have the right to block somebody saying. <laughs> now, as far as the the down dude, I just laughed. I truly did, and I'm thinking, nah, this person got something do against the Vikings and the ships. Maybe there was, you know, past life something on that. I don't know. People should have the freedom to do whatever. Right, but also with freedom comes responsibility. Yeah. And this is part of the problem right now. People want somebody else to live their lives for them, to tell them what to do, when to do it, how to do it. I mean, that that ain't freedom. That's slavery. That's prison. Yeah. Yeah. So... I just want to live my life. I just want. I just want to be able to make a beach hut without them taxing my ass. Well, and the, and that's the thing. It's like most people are just. They want to have a sense of purpose. They want to know that they're loved, and then they just want to be left alone. Yeah, yeah. That's that's humanity. Mm. It doesn't have to be hard. You know, just leave each other as alone. Keep your hands to yourself. All that good stuff. Kindergarten things. <laughs> So pray for us. Pray Mind for our own world. Damn business. Pay attention. Keep your head on a swivel. Keep your powder, powder dry. All that good stuff. Look up to the skies. Mm-hmm. Unless something's going on, that if if you get bad vibes, don't look at the sky. Well, like I said, it's not Go necessarily in the house, lock alien. Your door. Yeah, not necessarily aliens, but uh, yeah, fallen angels. Yeah. Whatever those beings are, they are totally have a hatred of humans Mm -hmm. so if you've had experiences this is depressing if you've had experiences with the paranormal supernatural encounters with ufos aliens cryptids yes uh if you do have prayer requests or anything like that shoot us an email cup of coffee with scream at gmail.com email address will also be in the description box along with the links to the articles Mm mm-hmm and yeah, we need to pray one for another. Yeah. All the petty differences would definitely disappear in an instant. Or would they? I mean, I would, or like, would they? I would like that, but do I think that will happen? Hell no. I don't know. People are going to be petty and well, people it's, are going to be... It's interesting because during a crisis, people have... a Not everybody, but a lot of people have a tendency to gather together and help each other. But it's after the crisis that people go back to the petty differences and stupid shit. They, I don't know. We're, we have a tendency as a species to not learn well. <laughs> no, we do not learn well at all. But anyhow. Yeah. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, comment, and most of all, subscribe and click that notification button for daily notifications of our daily uploads. Thank you all. Have a good What's that look for? <laughs> Go out and light a sparkler. Have some watermelon and a hot dog. Sniff a firework. Yeah. Give give thanks to God. Give that get that good huff of sulfur. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That sounds good. Maybe that's why I like the smell of sparklers. I don't know. <laughs> Getting that good dose heavy dose of sparklers. That's why we eat the fish around here. We need more mercury in think, our system. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I have been craving seafood. I think I'm low on mercury. I just want sushi. I want sushi 24-7. Bye. We'll see you on the next cup. Bye. Bark. <laughs>